Hello there, everyone. Today, I am doing a sequel to my first well-performing video, ranking every region in Breath of the Wild. Today, we will be looking at the 20 regions of Tears of the Kingdom, and ranking them from worst to best. A few rules first. I'm only counting the surface, as archipelagos aren't distinct enough to rank by region, and the depths don't have regions. The regions will be split into chunks of the map that you get from the towers, and will be named similar to how they were in Breath of the Wild, although many map chunks have changed. The five main dungeons will also be included include se separately, but they will be judged only be judged as an area, and the quest to get there will have little effect on its ranking. There will also be minor spoilers for some story quests, but none of the late and end game. The 20 regions we'll be ranking are North Central Hyrule, South Central Hyrule, the Lake Jungle Region, Farin, West Nakluda, East Nakluda, Laneru, Akala, Elden, Woodland, East Hebra, West Hebra, Tabantha, Gerudo Highlands, Gerudo Desert, Wind, Fire, Water, Lightning Temples, and Floating Hyrule Castle, which is technically part of the surface. Finally, this is all my opinion, and feel free to leave your rankings in the comments. I try to reply to everyone I can think of a good response to. Alright, let's begin. In dead last is... Unsurprisingly, the Gerudo Highlands. Still a barren wasteland with next to nothing in it, and still being boring to traverse. Some of the new caves are interesting, such as the one in the ape heroine's face that leads to Tingle's hood. And the Yig Clan hideout is located here, being a sort of town with some neat rewards if you can get in. There is still no point to go here unless you're going for shrines, quark seeds, and the dragon tears. And the one found in this region is one of the more boring ones. Next is East Hebra. For some reason, Hebra has been split into two parts, with this part containing very little aside from the North Lomai Labyrinth, the two dragon tears. The two dragon tiers are also more on the exposition heavy ones, but seeing Ganon turn to a demon king is pretty awesome. The main Hebra Peak is also located in this region, but it has sky parkour leading to the Wind Temple. The main reason why I like it better is that it's prettier, but it's pretty interchangeable with number 20. In 18th is the Water Temple. Despite being completely different from more infamous water temples, I find this one to be the most boring of the main dungeons. The way to get here was amazing, mostly because of Sidon, but the temple itself is super boring in design and puzzles. The idea of a main source of water in Hyrule, floating in from an island that's been corrupted, is very interesting, and looking at it from de below makes, he makes it look like a majestic sky city. But once you get there, it's just wonky anti-grav parkour. The puzzles aren't very memorable, aside from the spinny one, and this is the shortest temple in terms of terminals, only having four. Sidon also plays a very small role in this temple, only, be using, only being used in one puzzle to activate the terminals. The layout is also weird, and I cannot make out what the form of it is supposed to be. Is it a crab? Also, anti-grab feels very weird, but I guess it was the best they could do without diving mechanics and swimming that feels good. I really think the main issue with it is how underutilized Sidon is. This is where stuff got really hard to rank, since all the areas have some really cool stuff, but next is the Ridgeland Tabantha region next. This region was pretty empty in the first game, mostly being populated by cool looking rocks and these weird mushroom trees, aka the Dragonblood trees. Honestly, I haven't explored this area very much, so it's not that fair that it's this low. Next is the Fire Temple, which suffers from what I call the Wooded Kingdom effect. This is the effect where no matter how long you look at the map, you have no damn clue where you're going. The minecarts are very fun to mess around with, but getting around is so confusing. I also wish they kept the 3D maps for the dungeons, because it can be very hard to navigate. The dungeon also contains the weakest of the main story bosses in my opinion, but it isn't bad, just kind of forgettable. Also, lore? The best part of it is some Goron kid who wanted to find a lost city Gerondia. I thought it was just a one-off side quest, but the fact that it's in the game at the main story area, that's just, like, top-notch foreshadowing. Sadly, West Hebra is next, with another area that I haven't really explored outside the main story. I'm really confused why they split Hebra into two parts, they kinda need each other to be whole. This one 
place is higher mostly due to Rito Village, but even then, it just feels somehow emptier to me. Like there's less going on. Also, I absolutely hate the placement of the shrine. It's in such an inconvenient spot if you want to explore Rito Village. None of the other villages have the same issue. I also wish there's something on top of the bird perch, since I feel like there's supposed to be something there, but there's only a Korok. Overall, just an empty area without much to do from what I've played through. So it just got outclassed by the others. I really could not decide what should be next. Every region has something good, but North Central Hyrule, aka Lookout Landing, when Lower Hyrule Castle is next. This area is pretty empty, with it being the first area you explore after leaving the Great Sky Islands. This area was pretty flat in Breath of the Wild, but it had guardians back then, which really made it feel like you had to run. Lookout Landing is a new town, with pieces of every other town that you can slowly add through the course of the story. Lower Hyrule Castle has many interesting secrets with new objects and important areas from the first game. The only issue is that it doesn't feel whole, since the main part of the castle is in the sky. It's a nice beginning area of the game, but it just feels so empty. East Nakluda and the Lanayru Wetlands got combined in this game, and it makes a pretty good region. I also haven't explored this region thoroughly, but Kakariko is a pretty nice village to visit. The general area is pretty nice to look at and is filled more filled than cent and is a more filled central Hyrule of sorts. I can't say much other than it's a nice simple region. Ruins look pretty cool. The Woodland region remains mostly the same from the first game. Its main location is the Lost Woods, which now have a really awesome quest to get into, rather than the fire shenanigans of the first game. The Typhlo Ruins also aren't shrouded in darkness for some reason, so we get to see what the place actually looks like. The first great fairy is located here, and a military training ground still exists. I would talk more about the Lost Woods, but that would be going too far into spoilers. Unfortunately, this region only has the Lost Woods, but the Lost Woods are able to bring this region up pretty high. The Elden region basically lost what it was known for, the lava. Death Mountain just feels weird without the lava. lava. Although, it, it has some settlements that are on the previous lava lakes that are pretty cool. The Depths version of Death Mountain actually has lava, so if you want to explore a volcano, head down there. The story quest in this region is also good. All of them are, but this one has some major highlights. One sort of spoiler is that Agoron is trying to get everyone high on drugs. Take that as you want. <laughs> The hike up Death Mountain is so fun, and you really need to play it to understand. The main downside is that the terrain is kind of boring to look at, and it lost what made Death Mountain distinct, but the new stuff is amazing. The Wind Temple was such a huge discovery. I initially went to the Gerudo Temple first, but my friend told me that I needed to head to Hebra to do this quest, and it was amazing. Climbing in a tornado blizzard through trampling skyboats was amazing, and diving down into a Wind Temple was perfect. The story behind it confused me a bit, but it's an amazing set piece for the dungeon. Also, the puzzles in this def dungeon are actually interesting and difficult. Who could have thought fun puzzles would have been fun, divine beasts? Although it took an embarrassingly long time to figure out I could fly through the window. I wish I could show you the temple during the blizzard, but I'm not going to replay the entire game for some extra footage. This is where stuff is getting really good. Next is the Lanayru region, home of Davy Jones and the fish people. Wait, you're telling me that they didn't use an octopus person as the boss? Where's the potential, man? The only thing I really have to criticize is the lack of pirates. Although, I could have just not seen them yet. Zoe's Domain is as beautiful as ever, and Link the Link and Sidon statue is one of the best parts of the game. The fact that Link is canonically Sidon's best friend is perfection. The main story quest in this area is also really good, bringing in many side characters and leaves me with a question of who the other Zora tribe is. But that's not important. The rain can be annoying, but it's not too big of a deal. Easily, it's, the, its best aspect is the story, where you visit many major locations of Zora's Domain. Just a really good area. The Lightning Temple is my favorite temple for its theme of Hidden Desert Pyramid and a quest leading to it. Getting to it is a pain, since you need to explore the Shrouded Desert, but the quest itself is a very interesting riddle. There's even a boss fight right before you enter, and it gives you a taste of the temple's boss, and gives you a clear objective right from the start. 
We head into the pyramid, and there's a pretty linear dark section before we get to the main room, where you need to find the terminals. But interesting that you can immediately ascend up to the boss chamber, but you need a specific thing to activate it, and you don't have it until you do the terminals. There are even a few three-way fights between constructs and gibdos. Anyway, I think the ending room is pretty awesome, especially with its name, the Room of Glorious Light. Maybe that I'm just a sucker for desert levels, but it's just so creepy and interesting. South Hyrule Field contains the Colosseum and a Great Plateau. The starting area of Breath of the Wild has been greatly redone, with much stronger enemies lurking around, and most of the stuff in the first game missing, making it feel like it's not the plateau everybody remembers. There are also so many amazing easter eggs, such as a Royal Claremore at King Rome's grave. It's just such a nostalgic feeling being back here, but it's not the same as we remember it. Is this how older Zelda players felt seeing ruins from previous games in Breath of the Wild? Anyway, the surrounding area is fine, with major spots like the Colosseum and Lake Komolo, but the plateau is definitely the highlight. Home of Heiteno Village, West Nakluda is East Nakluda, but better. Mostly because of Hiteno, which is more fleshed out than most villages, with some really well done side quests, and one of the most interesting NPCs in the game. Mount Laneru is as beautiful as ever, and the Hiteno Lab is one of the only connections left to the first game. I really wish they kept some story amounts from the first game, though, as it feels weird that there's barely any mention of the first game and its events. Really, I wish people would just stop calling me Random Traveler. I'm Link, Hero of Hyrule. This region is just a nice, calm place to be. That is, until you realize Zelda stole my house. I swear Zelda, if I save you, I will force you to give me back my house. At least I have my stupid upside-down bedroom and indoor stable in Nikala. We're finally into the top five now, with the worst of the best being the Faron region. I don't know why I called it that when the Faron jungle isn't even in this region. Lurland Village is probably the best quest in the game, since you find villagers all over Hyrule saying that Lurland was raided by pirates. But once you get there, you can kill the pirates and with the help of Bolson, rebuild the village back to its former glory. The side quest is just amazing. Also one of the better Dragon Tears is located here, and if you know why, you know why. Even Tide also being a pirate stronghold is an amazing addition, and adds even more to the island. Now the actual home of the Zonai, the Lake Jungle region. There's an amazing story quest here, and it's just so good you must play it. Even without it, the area offers a lot to do, such as exploring the jungle, killing all three head killing a three-headed dragon, and awesome Zonai ruins. And don't forget the Dondons. It's just some, such an awesome region. But the but the main reason is the extremely large story quest that I can't spoil. Jungles are awesome, as long as it's not in a magical video game. Hyrule Castle, enough said. Upper Hyrule Castle is packed to the brim with amazing content, such as exclusive weapons, exclusive armor, a pretty okay boss, and many more. Just like in the first game, Hyrule Castle is a maze to explore, with many secrets and treasure to find. Unfortunately, many hallways turn into dead ends, which is something I didn't really like. It sucks finding a passageway only for debris to block it. The Sanctum is finally explorable, and it's so cool. I wonder if there's a way to go down to the observatory, since it seems like such a good place to put a secret weapon or fabric. Another thing is that it holds back is another thing that holds it back is it's only half the castle, with major portions of it being left on the surface. Overall, it's an amazing dungeon with an awesome quest and loot, and it's still fun to explore. In second place is the Gerudo Desert. I always love a good desert area, and this new one improves off the first games in every way. There's more stuff to find, while Dugas aren't a complete joke to fight. You can buy alcohol! Gerudo Town lets me in without cross-dressing. But this area's trash because they didn't keep the Gerudo Vi set. Jokes aside, the region's super fun to explore with the new Zonai vehicles, and the ruins provide fun treasure, and Gerudo Town is my, fav is my favorite of the villagers for its side quest, dialogue, and alcohol. But it loses to one thing. Drumroll, please, for... Akala. This stunning autumn landscape is near perfect 
Terrytown is even more fleshed out, with unique services only found here. Many good quests, a monster collection, and Dr Link's dream home. With an upside bedroom and an in indoor stable. This new addition is super fun to mess around with, but I wish you could fill in holes in, in walls and there is a higher cap for the amount of rooms. The area is just so pleasant to look at. There are so many things to do here. The final Dragon Tier is even located here. The Yiga infiltrating the Akala Tech Lab is pretty interesting, and poses the Yiga as a way bigger threat than in the first game. The Labyrinths are three-layer dungeons, basically, and the Spring of Power has a joint side quest. There is just so much here, and Terrytown just brings it all together. So, how do you think of the ranking? Leave your comment down below telling me your rankings, or how the Water Temple is actually amazing. Also comment, um... Mighty Bananas to show that you made it to the end. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.